Well, it looks like all hell's breaking loose down in Houston as the Deshaun Watson situation is getting worse. And I'm going to explain why if you're a smart coach, you won't take this job unless you're a particular type of coach, as well as Dan Orlovsky's list of teams that shouldn't call the Texans about Watson as he's missing a couple. All of that from the podcast. Coming up in just a minute. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation. I appreciate you joining me. I'm Jay, one of the hosts, and uh, we're going to dive into a few topics. But first off, let's go in and talk about Deshaun Watson, okay? Okay, so this Deshaun Watson situation is getting worse and worse. So Chris Mortensen from ESPN has just reported that Watson is beyond unhappy, like, there's levels to his happiness in this situation, and he's gone from 2 to 10 in unhappiness, and he's probably at about 150 at this point, to the point of Watson's definitely not wanting to stay in Houston. We've all heard this. We heard the reports and everything, but it's getting bad. It's so bad that Watson, for them to keep him, for him to want to stay He says that the owner, Cal McNair, would need to fire himself. Firing the executive vice president, Jack Esterby, is not enough. And, of course, the search situation with them bringing in the general manager really pissed him off without even consulting him or even showing that they had interest in his opinion, especially since he is the franchise player. Watson's pretty pissed off about that part. So it's interesting to see what exactly Houston's going to do to try to figure this out because they still don't even have a head coach. And honestly, my thought behind this job is if you're a coach in the NFL right now, like right, right now, avoid this job like the plague. You're guaranteed to be a scapegoat. Guaranteed. Now, if you are, let me pull that back. If you're in a position of a quality control assistant or something that low on the totem pole, you could probably take this job just to get yourself some attention and drum up some uh, some some credibility for those to get you, yourself in a, a coordinator job. But outside of that, I wouldn't touch it. The only person I would see it would make sense to take a job like this would be someone in the realm of an Urban Meyer Someone, which talked about him on another part of the podcast as well as in another video, about someone like him who wants to get their foot in the door in the NFL. Someone that wants to get the opportunity but has no NFL experience. This is the perfect job for somebody like that. Only because these jobs don't come up very often and it's really hard for someone without the right pedigree or credentials to actually get this opportunity. So... No head coach, your starting quarterback is disgruntled, and now you have to ask yourself, what exactly is the plan moving forward? There's nothing that Houston's going to be able to do to convince this man to stay, and the one problem they have, too, is there were the rumors going around about Miami being a trade destination for Tua Tagovailoa, as well as multiple first-round draft picks, which is, I think, what also upset Watson even more. So... They have to figure out what to do to rebuild this relationship. And it's it's saying it to the point where fans are jumping in. There were some fans that were planning a march in protest of ownership on behalf of Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson told them, nah, man, we good. Don't do that. I want y'all to be safe. Don't don't go down there and mess with them. We good. (laughs) So in other words, he's already washed his hands. He's Gucci. He's trying to be about. And so now we got to look at trade destinations what are some good trade scenarios because the value of a player like Deshaun Watson who led the league in yards this year at the top completion percentage at 70 percent what is the right type of compensation for somebody that hasn't even hit his peak yet hasn't hit his peak yet what is the compensation for somebody like this this is multiple first round picks I mean Jamal Adams was able to command two first coming from the Jets to Seattle. So you know this man's got to get at least three first, probably a couple seconds, and a player to make this happen. Can Miami do it? Yes. They're actually the perfect destination for this. 
But I want to talk about some of the other ones. So ESPN's Dan Orlovsky, former NFL quarterback, put together a list of teams that should pick up the phone and call Houston. And on that list, he's missing two that should not call. So this is the ones he said. He says that there are six teams, in my opinion, that shouldn't be calling Houston, meaning they, they should not be calling them. Everybody else in the league should. These six should not. He says the Kansas City Chiefs, valid. Seattle Seahawks, valid. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, with Brady's contract situation, valid. The Buffalo Bills, nah, you don't want to make that call. Josh Allen's it. The Chargers, which he's believing that Justin Herbert is the future, I don't know, but I'm going to hear it out. And then the Green Bay Packers. These are the six teams he believes should not be picking up the phone. He's way off on one. I think the Chargers should pick up the phone and make a contact because no matter how good Justin Herbert was this season, he's not better than Sean Watson. So I think they should consider a conversation with him about that. But he's missing, to me, two teams. Technically three, but I understand why two of them he probably didn't put on there. But one of them, what the hell was you thinking? He didn't have Baltimore Ravens on there. Now I know, you can say anything you want to about Lamar Jackson, and I'm going to talk about him even more in another video and further into the podcast around what happened in the uh, AFC Divisionals. But Lamar Jackson is not somebody you trade for Deshaun Watson. You don't do it. Now, Watson is a better thrower, but it's questionable if he's a better player than Lamar Jackson. I mean, Lamar Jackson did get an MVP trophy. I mean, Deshaun Watson got close. His team isn't built like Lamar's, but at the same time, I don't know if I can argue in favor of Deshaun Watson over Lamar Jackson. I don't know if I can. The Dallas Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals are two teams. I get why he says they should make the phone call, but I still don't know. With Joe Burrow's injury and Dak Prescott's injury, it makes sense. You probably should consider it, especially with Dak's situation with him being on the franchise tag and him having that injury. Now we got to see what he's going to look like next year. But he's still young, and Dak knows the game so well. I don't think you would want to throw that away. Unless Dallas knows they're not bringing Dak back. If they know that's definitely not going to happen, go for it. But then you got to make sure you got enough compensation to get a Deshaun Watson along with his contract. The other one, Joe Burrow, that one, that doesn't make any sense to me. Joe tore his ACL, MCL, like a little, a nasty injury. He seems like he's okay. He's not really a scrambler. He is more of a passer passer. So I don't get why you would already quit on a guy like Joe Burrow. Especially with the way that the Bengals are constructed. You put Deshaun Watson up there. I don't know if he does that much better than what Joe Burrow did based upon the weapons that's up there right now. I don't know. They were dealing with a ton of injuries throughout the season. Now they got a solid running game. Pretty good receivers. T. Higgins is probably going to be something a force to be reckoned with here in the future. And then, of course, A.J. Green, at his age, you hope that he can hold up. I don't see Deshaun Watson being a good choice to go to Cincinnati. Plus, I don't think Deshaun Watson will go to Cincinnati. That that organization is run almost as bad, if not as bad, as the way Houston's being ran right now. So why would you go from a bad situation to another bad situation? If any place for him to go, honestly, is going to be Houston. That's the best place. So, Dan, I don't like the thought that you would skip out on you would put Baltimore out there to say that they need to make the phone call for him because unless they're going to trade Lamar Jackson and a whole bunch of draft picks to get Deshaun Watson doesn't make any sense when you can keep Lamar Jackson use those draft picks and surround him with more talent and get better yeah you know Lamar has like a 75 to 80 percent win percentage in the regular season may have gone far in the playoffs yet but Hell, Peyton Manning didn't win his first playoff game until, what, his, like, fifth or sixth season? You got time. He's young. He's only 24 years old. Don't waste that. He's not even in his prime yet. He's just ramping up. So, if anything, Houston, 
You need to go ahead and start making those phone calls. Sean Watson's not coming back. Miami, make it happen. Pull the trigger. That would be worth it.